I'm your host, Eric Eisenberg. Welcome to Hero Blend number 20. If you've been paying attention to comic book movie news over the last couple weeks, you know that there's been a lot of drama going on behind the scenes at Marvel Studios. First, Edgar Wright decided to drop off Ant-Man at the last minute, and most recently, Doctor Strange got a new director in Scott Derrickson. There's a ton to talk about, so check it out. Welcome back, everyone. I am once again joined by AMC Movie News' own Amy Rose Eisenbach. How's it going? Good. Thanks for having me back. Of course. We have a lot to talk about we this do. week. Uh, if you've been paying attention to comic book movie news over the past couple weeks, you'll know that Marvel's in a bit of a directing issue on one half or another. Uh, Ant-Man, Edgar Wright left, is now the project is now completely without a director. Doctor Strange now actually has a director. Hey Rose, let's get an overview of this situation. I mean, this is kind of a chaotic moment for Marvel, no? It's it's a bit chaotic, especially considering their track record. Yes. It has just been getting better and better. Captain America was sensational. The hype around Guardians of the Galaxy We're is off the charts, amazing, man. <laughs> especially for a property like that. Yeah, exactly. Which is why it kind of instilled more hope in Ant-Man, which mm -hmm. again, it's a little bit more of an obscure property. Sure. And that's why I was so excited for Edgar Wright's vision. Absolutely. So that's the first item. I was really disappointed that he left, but we've seen this before with Marvel. Yes, I mean that's I mean Marvel does have a track record, an interesting track record where they don't necessarily get along with all the no. talent. I mean, there was John Favreau had conflicts on Iron Man 2. Yeah. There's the whole story behind uh, Patty Jenkins on yeah. Thor 2. There is a track record here. A track record. At the same time though, you can't argue with the way their system works. And it's working. And it's, it's working. working. It's very working very well. Um, and Feige's obviously a brilliant man, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you don't hire a director like Wright without kind of knowing what you're getting. So. Exactly. And also, I mean, that hiring was also made eight years ago when so Marvel had ago. no idea what they were yet. Yeah. And they've evolved into a very collaborative company. Yeah. And if you're not necessarily going to be able yeah. to play ball on that, yeah. that's going to cause problems. And it literally is a universe. Like, everything now has a direction and tie-in, and it's big. So yeah. I, I get it from both perspectives totally. about not wanting to compromise, but it doesn't diminish the fact that I'm disappointed. Yes. And I mean, Edgar Wright is a phenomenal director. And but you I know he can do that kind of problem. Exactly. And... and Fantastic, so. Absolutely, and I, it's gonna be. I mean, it's, we're gonna miss that we kind are. of visual style. And honestly, it is a good segue because I can understand why directors might be kind of intimidated to come onto this yeah, project. Yeah, it's a little bit of a hot mess at the moment. Um, and for those, I mean, we've seen Adam McKay so yeah. far go in, end up saying no. Uh, Ruben Fleischer ended up passing on it. It uh, would appear. Uh, you have. Um, What's his name? From Dodgeball. Rothen Thurber also apparently said no. Yeah. Uh, that's not great for Marvel. I it's mean... It's not looking too good. And I mean, they're all such very distinctive styles as well. Adam McKay, that would have been a really interesting answer. It would have. And honestly, <laughs> I will say something about uh, the directors that they have been choosing. Mm -hmm. These aren't guys that are just fitting into the fold. No. They are guys who actually and have like a, their own certain style to yeah. them. And I mean, if Marvel's still looking in that direction, that's great. I, mean, I, I really like that. And I think that's one thing I can always applaud Marvel for mm -hmm. is that they don't go conventional. They pick yes. things that actually would fit. And I mean, Ruben Fleischer, I'm not going to hold Gangster Squad against him because that was really disappointing. Yeah, that... But Zombieland, Zombieland you know, Three Minutes or Less, like, yeah. that was quirky, but they both, I think he would have been actually a really good fit for Ant-Man. Yeah, totally. Um, and I mean, then, Zombieland proved that he has a very unique view for yeah. action. And I mean, with Ant-Man... I Ant -Man, that movie. I mean, with Ant-Man's powers, it, can t it exactly. lends itself to a stylish. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, let's also talk about... There was, uh, the new ones, the yeah. New, the new names that have just uh, entered on. It it won't stop. It won't stop. We're going to keep hearing it's uh, Nicholas Stoller, yep. who we know from Forgetting Sarah Marshall, yeah. uh, Five Year Engagement, and most recently Neighbors, Neighbors which so is a good. huge hit. Yeah. Uh, so th that kind of explains his position on this. Yeah. No? Yeah. I, I think that, you know, again, but it's a bit, because obviously Ammon's going to have elements of comedy, kind of yes. like most of them. I mean, Captain America was a lot more intense spy thriller, but, but it still had those still had the in jokes. There. Yeah, Anthony Mackie was freaking hilarious. I movie. love that man. Yeah. <laughs> Falcon out. But um, I, I also think, again, kind of an unconventional choice. Why yep. he might be hot right now, because Neighbors was really good course, and yeah. surprising. Mm. Also, I wouldn't have, you know, speculated that that would ever be in the mix. So no. I think that's, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, it's worth noting that these are all comedic directors. Exactly. The, the, the action kind of comes second, yeah. but they all have comedy some... Comedy drama. Yeah, yeah, comedy drama. Um, and finally, the other name that's been coming onto the radar is Michael Dowes, yeah. who, um, versus the other ones, I think is a bit lesser known. He Much directed known. Uh, Take Me Home Tonight, which is the movie, the hey. 80s movie with Topher Grace that was shelved <laughs> for like... 
I think a decade or something like that. I think it was made in the 80s and yeah. now it just looks like a throwback. The best that kind part of, thing. of that one was the soundtrack. Yes, that's true. And it was a pretty <laughs> badass soundtrack. Banging I mean, soundtrack. You could give that to uh, maybe. maybe. But, I, but I think more appropriately is uh, Goon. Which I really like. Which is a, I mean, it's an indie hockey comedy. It came yeah. out a few years ago. Uh, not exactly a huge budget to it, no. but it's insanely entertaining. More Sean than I Scott. expected. I yeah, exactly. honestly didn't want to see it. And I yeah. was like, okay. And so, like, honestly, that's, I mean, fair options there. Yeah. Um, we'll see where it goes from here. But out of, out of those two, who would you rather see? Um, I like Nick Solar a Me lot. Too. I think he's a really yeah. talented guy. And he, uh, I will say, out of the group, we haven't seen him do any action yet. No. So that yeah. would be a definite move for him. Yeah. Uh, and I think it would be really interesting. Yeah, me too. Um, but there's also, and while uh, Marvel is still searching for their Ant Man director, we do now have a Doctor Strange director. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a Doctor Strange release date. No. But that well, mo- there are two <laughs> release <laughs> dates that have not been announced, like yes. the title, so it would make sense to capitalize on that or yep. just continue their world domination and take another exactly. one. Exactly. So. And then Kevin Feige has, like, been, he's confirmed that uh, Doctor Strange was going to be in phase three, yeah. uh, I think we back in January of Captain last year. Captain America? Yeah, Kevin exactly. Strange? We're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. This is happening. So, uh, <laughs> um, that's, I mean, and they, I think that they found a very interesting filmmaker, albeit one with a spotted track record in mm-hmm. Scott Derrickson. Mm-hmm. Um, his most recent movie, uh, directing wise, is Sinister, yeah. which I think uh, I didn't, I wasn't too big on the story aspect no. of it, which I thought was kind of conventional. But I will say that movie was extremely well directed. I agree, and the exorcism of Emily Rose. Exorcism of Emily Rose, another while good example. the name freaks me out a little because it's a little <laughs> too close to home. <laughs> Um, I actually thought it was a really well done film, and I mean, Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme, like, there's gonna be some weird, dark yes, elements to absolutely. it, and I think a horror director is a really clever thing, and I he's kind of a niche horror director mm-hmm. as well, and he's also used to turning kind of smaller budgets, typical with those kind of films, exactly. into something that doesn't feel that way, and, you know, Marvel, we'll see, we'll see what kind of budget they throw to him. Yeah, it's probably not gonna be too big, but they, I mean, they imagine that he's yeah. a guy who can work within those limitations, but I completely agree, like, Doctor Strange is a character who kind of lends himself to, like, yeah. scarier, darker yeah. elements, and he's a guy to do it. Um, I will say the only thing that does give me pause is the last time Scott Derrickson was given a project with a bigger budget was the Day the Earth Stood Still remake. Oh, about that. Um, <laughs> I will say, I admit that I have never seen it, but oh, okay. I will also add it's that I have never heard a positive thing yeah, about it. Yeah, don't, don't see it. Yeah, don't uh, I mean, it's classic sci-fi. I, there's the classic sci-fi to go back to. But also, I mean, a very different vibe. Yeah. I mean, this is a property that has a more clear cut, at least direction, and with Feige and T behind them, Mm -hmm. they have a lot of resources to pull from this universe, a lot of other characters that could be introduced, and where it's going to go and tie in, and they do have a formula down. Oh, yeah. And with his direction and style, I feel like it's less of a gamble than picking up a movie like that that's been done a million different times. Exactly. Some of them work, some of them don't. Um, But yeah, the budget thing will be interesting, because I don't think they're going to give him a gigantic one. No, especially because Doctor Strange isn't... He isn't... He isn't yeah. Spider-Man or X-Men he or Captain sure America. He's yeah. he's a lower name guy, but uh, I mean, you put enough style yeah. behind it, you can get another Guardians of the Galaxy. Which totally, which looks totally. amazing. Yeah. Don't disappoint me, Gun. <laughs> Don't disappoint me. I'm just glad that first of all that we're getting this because yes. it's such a cool character. Absolutely. And I'm also yeah, I'm really just Marvel. You're just crushing it. One thing I will uh, I will ask about. Uh, do you think that it will be an origin story? And if so, I, do you think it'll be a period origin story? I, I don't, I don't, it all kind of depends on where they want to go with the character mm-hmm. and how he's going to fit and where we're going to see him pop up in other films. Right. Um, personally, I'd like to see that because his origin story is fascinating. Yes. And I'm a sucker for origin <laughs> stories. I don't want to see it again and again like Batman. I'm mm-hmm. really excited in, you know, DC property that they're not going to show Ben Affleck again. And you they're know. just going through that whole Yeah, I'm that we've glad they're not recycling that, but we haven't had a Doctor Strange. Exactly. So yeah. I personally think it'd be a wasted opportunity opportunity, especially to introduce a character with such a rich backstory that a lot of people don't know as well. I think that is a very important part. I am kind of hoping that's a little lesser on the origin story. Yeah. I, I think the origin story is necessary. Yeah, but not like the uh, whole movie. But I don't want it to be the whole movie because no. we've already seen so many origin stories. Uh, and also, I mean, the fact that... Um, it's it, Doctor Strange is mentioned in Captain America: Winter Soldier. Suggests that he is that kind so of awesome. he's, it's a great moment, <laughs> and it's, he's obviously a presence. So yeah. you can maybe kind of go back and forth between it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could maybe even get like a younger version, an older version mm-hmm. of Doctor Strange. There are many ways to play it that could be extremely interesting, and uh, I'm hoping that Darkson's up for the task. Yeah, I'm really hoping so too. And it brings up an interesting point: if that does occupy 
one of the other release dates. Mm-hmm. Like, are we getting a Black Panther? Uh-huh. Are we getting like what's Captain the- Marvel? Captain oh, yeah. Marvel. Because- well, then Captain America and Captain Marvel. Being I, in the I don't. Same you're right. Slate. They it wouldn't might be do a bit that. Weird. But um, yeah, I just I think it's really interesting that they're kind of going with the more unconventional Mm -hmm. um, for at least the next planned phases. Exactly. Which I really, really like. And the fact that they're going back to the Russos, I mean, for Captain America 3 is... I mean, there's not better news than that. (laughs) Because they just crushed the first one. And then that new spy thriller, yeah. So they're... It's exciting. But Ant-Man... Yeah. Ant-Man's a bit of a tricky situation. It really uh, is. I mean, I know that they're doing it, and like a lot of people are losing faith in mm-hmm. this property, and I do think it's a little scary that these pretty esteemed directors have come in and walked away and from said it. No, Who yeah. doesn't want to direct a Marvel property At this point right in time, now, it's very strange. Where they own the world. Yeah. I mean, I, I do wonder how much Edgar Wright's like ghost has, yeah. to, has to do with it. Um, I guess for closing thoughts, yeah. do you think Ant-Man uh, should happen? Do you think that it should happen for July? It's July release date next year. I do. I think that if they push it off um, their release date, that it's already it already has a bit of controversy mm-hmm. around it because so many people, even though Edgar Wright is not a mainstream director, I mean, with his Cornetto trilogy, like with everything, Scott Pilgrim, he's got a big fan base. Yeah. And for the people that did not know about Ammon, they were excited that he was coming in. So without that, it leaves some pretty big shoes to fill. That's true. Um, and like, what was the real? Like, was his direction awesome, or was it really not part? of the plan like we'll never know exactly fully. oh he but, may tell us someday but yeah down the line but they really need to be careful and make sure well they you also get... don't want to john carter it and you don't want to like and make i liked john it carter yes yeah, so did i but it's awful and so you have but you don't want to create this negative spectacle no. behind the scenes that's going to taint its perspective yeah performance. i am still hoping that ant-man happens uh with or without it right i think that just i mean who doesn't want to see uh, Paul Rudd hang out with Michael Douglas on screen for two hours? I, mean, I know, come on, people. and that come on. that also brings up like an interesting point because like I really like him, mm-hmm. but like can he sell a movie like on his own with that? You know, and that's well, why let's you need find out by the Amorian piece. Let's just yes. make the movie. <laughs> yes, I still think they should make it, but cool. they do have to be careful about the steps they take because it does have some negativity. And if they move off the release date, it's just going to heighten that. Exactly. So they have to do everything within their power to hit that date. And that means finding a director soon. Uh, Amy Rose, thank you so much for being thank on the show. You. And again, hopefully we'll be back soon. You will. Okay. <laughs> Till next time, guys.